recording. I need to explain to you guys kind of my teaching philosophy and stuff that I do that's a bit unorthodox. Um, because also professors don't explain their teaching philosophies for the students and why they do certain things the way they do. For instance, how many of you thought module three was hard, specifically three and four? Great, because I don't believe in, in uh, coddling you people and uh, because you're all adults, right? Okay, how many people feel they need more time on it? Great, you have more time on it, okay? So, so let, me, let me also explain something about my, about something else about the way I run things. I generally like to, I like to tighten the thumb screws until people scream. And I hadn't received any screaming yet. And then I remembered you were all freshmen and might be afraid to email me for extensions. So, um, and so generally the way I, 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 I do things is I set really ambitious dates with, with enough time for students to um, basically you know, move along, you know, enough time for me to push things back if need be. So if you guys need things to have a bit of a later due date, that's no problem, okay? Just email me an extension, and once I get enough, email me asking me for an extension. And if enough people email me and let me know, I'll generally push it back. I like to think I'm a fairly reasonable guy, okay? That being said, that doesn't stop me from posting new stuff, right? Because, you know, the people who manage to finish it up, they they don't want to get too bored, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to focus on two things today. So first things first, I will extend this by a day or two, right? So you'll have an extra day or two to work on it. I'll just figure out how much it is in between the time, um, between office hours. But if people need more time, then ask for more time because I don't know what is, it's, because I know around bouts what is reasonable. And I know if I set deadlines, you'll probably do it, but I want to make sure it's done and you're not tearing out your hair to do it, right? I don't want it to be too stressful. Now, that being said, these things are hard because it's really hard to think about these things logically. Computer science, if I were to, that's a spam call, I'm sure. Okay, watch it be like super important. Um, so, so, the, um, so one of the things I want to do um, with you guys is um, just, you know, I'll give you guys hard stuff and, um, you know, it's really, ah, that's where I was going with this. So computer science, the reason it's kind of hard to learn is because it's a factor of a couple things, right? I'm sh um, some of you are like going, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm a smart guy. Why am I not getting this? Because it's tough. Because computer science is, is if I was to sum up what it's a degree in, it's a degree in, po in puzzle solving. Right? That's what you're doing. You're learning how to be able to solve puzzles. Or, you're, or if you're taking this because, because you want to, then you're learning how to solve puzzles. Right? Um, it's kind of why like math is a good predictor, because that's the only place where we give you word problems, where basically those are kind of graded puzzles. So that's why math has basically got, got that amount of crossover there. So let's go ahead and we're going to talk about like um, doing something similar. I'm going to do something, an example that's similar to what you had to do for your homework, and I'm going to try my best to explain it for you guys. All right. And then what we're going to do is that I'm going to introduce the while loop, which is another kind of loop. Okay. So that's what we'll do for today. Um, and then um, we'll go on to the, because the while loop is kind of useful for your homework. All right. And I've already instructed that one of the, to the TAs, that one of the parts of your homework that we'll be releasing for this week will be done in the lab. So you probably want to go to lab because you'll get part of your homework done for free. I mean, that's a pretty good deal. So, all right, got to incentivize you to keep going to lab. Um, all right, so let's go ahead, and I'm working in, in a different editor today, so as opposed to, as opposed to idle. I'm going to be working in Gini, um, which is a different editor. Um, and let me just go ahead and boot up my terminal just to make sure I can increase the size so everybody can see it. Um, all right, so edit, preferences, do, 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 present. Yeah, and let's go ahead and bump this up to 24 so that it's easy to see. Boom. Okay, there we go. All right, so, um, and this is it's just going to highlight stuff. It's not idle. It's okay. It works basically the same as idle. I just hit a button, and it runs the Python script for me. And I just use this because I prefer to be using this. 
Um, you'll also notice that basically it will start doing weird things to my font, and that's okay. So you'll see it when we get there. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how do we, uh, about something to, um, what I want to draw. Something pretty similar to what we had to do for homework. Let's go ahead and write a function that draws a triangle, okay? Um, specifically, we're going to draw a triangle of a certain size. So I want a function that basically if I pass in one, it's just going to kind of do this for me, right? But if I pass in two, it will do, let's say, this for me, right? And if I pass in three, it will, it will do this for me, right? And if I pass, right, three line, so we'll pass in how high I'd like to make the triangle. And basically it will draw a triangle. So this is very similar to what, to part of what you had to do for the hourglass, right? Right? So the big thing here to figure out how to build these things is to figure out the pattern, right? So if I pass in five, right, it's going to look like this. All right, so we need to find the key features of, of this. We can typically, when we're drawing figures, we can just typically split it into parts. So first things first, um, let's just start our function. So def define draw triangle. And I'm going to take in uh, height. I'm going to call my variable height. Give it a nice descriptive name. And then I'm going to call, and I'm just going to say print placeholder, right? Because I'm not really doing anything right now, right? I'm just writing the function and showing you kind of the flow for this. And then draw triangle five, right? And now I'll run it, and it comes up with placeholder, right? Right. I'll just go ahead and for triangle of height um, plus str height. So part of the reason I like using Gini is that it's got an what what we call an autocomplete engine in it, um, which is that basically if I start typing something like draw triangle. I can select it from a drop-down menu and hit enter, and it will automatically complete what I'm, ta what I'm doing, which is useful for me. Um, but it, unlike stuff like IntelliJ, it doesn't, it's, not, it's very simple about the way it does it, which is that it simply uses some, a couple of stuff that's really common to Python, and then it just uses whatever else I happen to have written. Right, so it knows that draw triangle is a thing because draw triangle already appears here. If I simply if I put happy over here, then it will autocomplete. Ha it will give autocomplete as a happy as a suggestion right for happy right over here. Sorry, we'll do happy as an autocomplete su a suggestion right over there. So nothing too worrisome about this. No, it's not really anything like super exciting. I'm not really doing this. So place over for a triangle of height five, right? I pass in the height. There needs to be five lines, right? That's what it means to be. If I pass in four, it should be go up to here. And if I pass in three, it should do this. All right, so, um, okay, we'll start there. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just put five lines. I'm oh, sorry, I'll, put, I'll, I'll print out, you know, print, I'll print out a line for each line we have, right? So five. And notice that I'm just gonna be very methodical about this, four x in, range height print this is a line right so now if I run draw triangle 5 it'll come up and say oh you got an error invalid syntax interesting for height in range for x in range height ah Everybody see it? Yes. Yep. I make mistakes too. That wasn't deliberate on my part. I'm not just trying to test you. I make mistakes too. The difference is that I've made these mistakes like 50 times. Well, what happened there? Need another one. Also not deliberate. Placeholder for triangle of height five. This is a line, this is a line, this is a line, this is a line. So it printed out, out this is a line height number of times. Height happened to be five there. If I pass in three, 
right? Three gets copied over to here. So when it says four X in range height, it will do this block three times, right? Height gets replaced by three, so, right? Or if I pass in 10, height will be replaced by 10, right? That's kind of an important concept here, where basically these variables, you know, dictate how long something is gonna, be, is gonna take. Okay, so we'll go ahead and remove our placeholder because we don't really need that anymore. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at the components of an individual line, all right? So it looks like every line but the first one has a couple of colons in it, okay? It has some colons in it. Every line but the first one has a couple colons in it. Every line has a, sl has a forward slash and every line has a backslash, right? Oh, and every line has a bunch of spaces, right? So we can find, kind of break it into four parts, right? Every line has spaces, has some number of spaces. It might be zero, but every line has some number of spaces. Every line has exactly one slash. Every line has two colons, and every line has one backslash. What about spaces that come after these slashes? Eh, you can't see them, right? You can't see the effects of them, so don't worry about them. So let's go ahead and just keep it simple, right? Every line has a single slash and a single backslash. So I'll go ahead and start by doing that. So I'll print out slash, and then I'll print out backslash. By the way, this one part on my issue, this is a, careful, this is a um, deliberate mistake on my part leading up to the next thing. Okay, so I printed out 10 lines, or I tried to print out 10 lines. It turns out I printed out 20. Right, because I've got slash on one line, slash on a different line. Right, but at least I'm getting my forward slash and then my backslash. Right, they're in the right order. So how do I fix that? What's going on here? Well, the print statement, right, it prints it, and then by default it puts in a new line. Right. So if I change this to say end the line, instead of having by default the way it works is that we ask it to end the line by putting in a new line character there. Okay, that's the default way a line ends. Right? That's the default way it ends. Just please advance to the next line because generally if, I'm, if I print something, I'm done with that line. I'd like you to go on to the next line. So we can modify that. For instance, if I told it to put a bang right there, an exclamation point, it would do slash, then it ends the print statement with a bang, and then it goes on to the next, uh, then it goes on to the next print statement. Right? Slash, bang, and then print out a regular print statement, which set, prints out the backslash and goes on to the next line. So if instead I go ahead and put, oh, let me go ahead and close that because it's done. If instead I just go put, put nothing there, I get my slash and then I get my backslash. Okay, so all that's left is to figure out the colons, okay? Well, it's the spaces and then the colons, right? So let's focus on the, on the spaces first, right? Actually, would you like me to do the colons first or the spaces first? I'll let you guys decide. Spaces? Okay, spaces. So let's think about this. So it's generally easiest when I'm like working with something of a specific example. So we'll go ahead and go back to five because that's what I have drawn here. Now for this one, let's call this guy line zero. Or you can do line one, but I'll go ahead and say line zero over here. On line zero, I'd like how many spaces? It's a bit hard to count, but since it's mono, since we're using a monospace font, this is actually why that why we want to use a monospace font, right? I can go, I can count it off like this: one, two, three, four spaces on line zero. Then I want one, two, three on on line one then two spaces, then one space, then zero. So the number of spaces I'd like are four, three, two, one, zero. Now I have five lines, right? So let's go ahead and write this down here. I've got five lines, right? So let me go ahead and write this down. Generally when I, I find to do this, the easiest way is to, figure, is to write down a chart to do the formula, is to figure out a formula. So line zero, one, two, three, four, so, and then we know for each of these, height has the same value, no matter what, five, 
five, five, five, right? The height of the, the height never changes, right? The height of each line never changes, right? And technically, what do we use for, what gives us 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 if the height is 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? X does. X is over here, right? I'm going to go ahead and switch this to line to be more consistent with it, right? So we've got on line 0, we've got, right, so let me go ahead and actually adjust this just to get my point across. Duplicate. Print line. Right? Line 0, line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4. Right? And I did that by printing out line. Right? Because line in range height, that line's values will be what? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because height is 5. So there will be 5 values, and they'll range from 0 to 4. All right? So question is, how, so the, here's the million dollar question. How many spaces do I want in each line? So how many spaces do I want in each line? I'd like four spaces over here, three over here on this next line, two over here, whoops, one over here, and zero over here. So the question is, is there a formula that I can use between line and height that will give me the number of spaces. Right? Is, it, is there something where basically if I, if I, can I create a formula that will give that involves line and height that will be true for all of these? All right, so let's go ahead and start with the bottom one because that's zero. That's easy to solve for, right? So I have height here, right? So what can I do to height to get it to zero? That involves line. Okay, if I subtract line over here, if I subtract line over here, right, height minus line, height's value on this line, height is five, line's value on this, on this line over here, whoops, oh, my bad, line's value over here is what? It is 4, and there's 0 spaces, right? I want this equation to equal 0. How can I modify this equation to make it equal to 0? Sorry? Minus 1 more, right? Right? Height minus line minus 1. Or, if that looks weird to you, I can do line plus 1 over here for this formula, okay? Height minus line plus 1 over here will work, right? Height is 5 minus line plus 1 gives me my formula over here. So the question is, does this formula work for all the other lines? Because we need one formula that works for all the lines. So 5 minus height, sorry, a height minus line plus 1, does this work over here as well? Yeah, 5 minus 3 5 minus 3 plus 1, which is 4, is equal to 1. So this formula also works over here. And also happens to work for the rest of the lines, right? So this formula is pretty good, right? Over here, height minus line, which is 0, plus 1, gives me that. Does everybody see that, how, how I solved this? I kind of just created this grid over here for this formula. Yes? 1 minus height? Minus, height minus 1? Yes. I could totally do height minus 1 minus line, right? Because it's math and, you know, and we're just doing addition and subtraction here, it's very easy to arrange it however you want, right? You know, it, it, there, there's a lot of ways to do it, right? All right. So over here, what I'm going to do is that I want to add in the number of spaces. And I'll just go ahead and keep line in front because that's not really going to modify what we have here. Um, so I want spaces. How many spaces do I want? Well, I want height 
let's put our formula in. Height minus line plus 1. Right, everybody see that this saying, I'd like height minus line plus 1 spaces over here, please. So now if I run this, whoops, it gives me, and again, I'm just printing out the line over here just so that we can see what line it is, right? We have four lines here, we, sorry, four spaces here, three, then two, then one, then zero, just like our formula said, right? Now sometimes though, right, sometimes you need to guess and check like over here, and that's perfectly fine. Like if I did height minus line, you might go, oops, you might go, I deleted one too many. You might go, oh, that was one too many space, right? Right? A lot of times you need to do guesswork sometimes. Like if it was just line, if you just had line rather than line plus one, you might go, oh, one too many space here. I need to fix that. And you'll fix that, right? You'll go, oh, if I just subtract one more value, then that will get me where I need to go. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and try this again with another, um, with another, um, sorry, another, right, we, ha we have one more thing to do. We have the colons, right? So let's figure out how, uh, so let's go ahead and copy this. So let's go ahead and just review for the people who don't know their useful uh, hotkeys. Right? So if you hold shift, right, and then you press up in your editor, right, you can select a whole bunch of things at once. You may not know this. I've, um, they don't teach these things in class, right? They did not in high school or in computer usage classes. They just expect you're going to pick this up. So if you then press control C or command C, whatever it is on your computer, you can copy that entire block. And then I'll just move down over here to another, to another place and I'll paste it over here, right? Because that's easy, right? So using Shift to uh, to move in it to you know select whole things at once, and on Windows you can hold Control and Shift at the same time to basically select you know essentially words plus space, which is really nice for selecting things all at once. So you know that's great. Uh, how did I learn all these things? Accident, and just like I accident because I tried typing too fast and I accidentally mashed the wrong keys, and I go, oh that's interesting. How did I do that? Um, all right, so here we need, um, I'm going to actually go ahead and move this above so we can see our, um, so we can see our triangle. Well, I didn't really need to do that because I hadn't changed anything. Oh, well. So I'm going to change this from, uh, so line and height are going to be the same. What about colons, right? Colons need to be different, and then we're going to change whatever our formula is, right? I doubt it's going to be height minus line plus one. Say, so colons, though. So how many colons do we need on line zero? We need zero, right? Uh, how many colons do we need on line two? Two. How many do we need on line two? How many on line three? And then eight. That's kind of a pretty, now that's a pretty obvious pattern I think people are seeing right here, right? If we're on line, z we need twice as many as the line, right? Line zero, line zero, we need zero colons. On one, we need two. On two, we need four. On three, we need six. And on four, we need eight. So height doesn't really come into play here at all, right? Generally, like the line, num the height of a figure you're drawing, it comes into play when you're doing subtraction, right? When you're starting off with some number and subtract, and you're going down with the number of you need. But as you're building up, generally you just need the line number you're on. So here, this is fairly straightforward. It is line times two, right? We need twice the line. Right, and this here, I'm doing this without nested loops, which is if you need to write something similar for this on an exam, I'm not going to ask you to do nested loops. Uh, typically, the way it works on exams is that when you've got figures that when you do this, I will give you code. And then I'll ask you to draw what the code produces, right? That's generally easier to do, but test the same thing, right? So colon z equal to, so we've got, so we need 0, then 2, then 4, then, so we just need line times 2. 
So over here, I will put right after we do our slashes, we will do star. And then how many do we need? We need line times 2. OK. And there, we've got our triangle. Let's go ahead and test it for something fairly big. Let's go make one of size 15. Oh, why is it jagged like that? Yes? Because the line numbers are pushing it to the side, right? Two digit line numbers. Ugh, how, how frustrating. So in that case, I will adjust it by putting a slash T over here. What does that do? Puts in a tab. So let's go ahead and see how that works out. Oh, nice. So it just added a tab in front of that, right? You can see my tab over here. And then it puts in the number of spaces. So I can just nicely adjust that, even though it added more spaces, right? And if I want to get my line numbers, and if I want to get that back to the way I originally stated, it, I just simply comment that out and run it. Boom. Yes? For three-digit numbers? Yeah, like um, it would solve it for three-digit numbers, I believe. Um, let's go ahead and see. Because tabs are generally pretty large. On my console, they're like five. They're like, sorry, they're I think like eight characters long. Um, but unfortunately, it does wrap. So, you know, so it gets a bit interesting looking, at, uh, to say the least. Um, but you know there there are limitations, and I don't expect you to be able to solve those. We're assuming that our console is of unlimited length, you know. All right, so that's with um, with not with using regular, you know, just unnested for loops. Now, in one of the assignments, I said you had to do it with nested for loops. So let's go ahead and see how we can translate this into for loops, right? Now remember, a for loop just simply says, I want to repeat this following statement a specific number of times, right? This, this says, so this for loop over here says, the lines that are un indented underneath me, right? The li lines that are indented into me, I want to repeat all those lines. I want to repeat them height number of times, which might be 15, it might be 5, it might be 100, but I want to repeat these lines height number of times. So, okay. So let's go ahead and translate this one. So, all right, print. So we're going to just simply take this, um, right, this statement over here where we're printing our stars, right? Instead of doing times line times two, right, which printed out line times two stars, I want to write a for statement over here for x in line, sorry, for x in range, and then whatever that is. So now I need to fill in the blank over here to basically say, I want to repeat this statement so that the appropriate number of stars print out. Oh, but I was printing out stars. It was supposed to be colons. Eh, let's go ahead and change that. Right, stars, colon, they're all the same width, so it's fine. So. Um, for instance, if I put three here, right, each time this loop runs, I'll print out three stars. Right? One, so there's three, sorry, three colons. One, three col, right, which is not what we want, but it's what I said it to, told it to do, right? This loop will run height number of times. It will print out the line number. It will print out height minus line plus one number of spaces. It will print out a slash. Then it will run this statement three times. It will print out three col uh, colon three times. Now, how do I get it to print out line times two number of of, of of colons? This one's a this one's obvious, or, or rather, it's it's not a trick question. I should say. I put in line times two over here. Right? Because this will repeat this statement line times two number of times. Make sense? 
right? Notice that all that really changed, and I'll change this to a colon, is that this went from being here into a range over here. Yes? Yes, that's why it's called a definite loop, because it will definitely run line times two number of times. If, now, the range that it's going over right, is 0 to line times 2 minus 1, but we don't need that for this particular thing. So for loops have a lot of uses. You can use it to repeat something a definite number of times. You can also use it to say, I'd like a variable to change, like we do over here. right? Line will be 0 to height minus 1. right? And that's just a byproduct of the, and the repeating is a byproduct of the way it works. Right? So over here, this one's a bit trickier, but we can see, um, but let's go ahead and see what we want to do. Actually, I don't think it's any trickier over here. If we write 4x in range, line and then we copy this over, over here, right? So we take this formula, cut it and put it over here, close this parentheses up, give it a colon, and now say we want this statement to be inside of this for loop, right? All I did right was move what was multiplied after that over there. It does that. So it's fairly easy to, produce, to, to, to actually translate those, those multiplication operations into those string multiplication operations into a nested for loop in Python. Also, I can use x here and x here because of something called scope, which is the rules that we use um, for basically determining how long variables exist. A line only exists inside of this for loop. If I try to get it to exist outside of the for loop, eh, right before the for loop, if I try to print it out beforehand, I'll get an error. If I try to print it out afterhand, well, actually something interesting is going to happen. Run. I'll actually print out. 14. So it will exist after the for loop. So I'm just simply reusing the variable here, right? I was done with x, so now x starts its new existence over here, starting from 0, so I can reuse that variable name. So you don't need to do i, j, k and worry about running out of the alphabet, you know? Everybody got, feel like they've got a better handle on this now? Right? So the key over here is to basically find the formula that works. Right? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about a different type of loop. So this um, loop is fairly straightforward. Um, I'm going to write a very basic program here. Um, okay. Um, summer.py. Right? And what this program will do is that I'm going to ask the user to input numbers. Okay? And the user is going to just input numbers until, um, you know, they, I'm going to let them keep inputting numbers. And when they're done inputting numbers, they will uh, put in done. And then I'll give them the sum. Right? I'll give them how many numbers they had. Right? So if you pick, if I'll ask you to give me numbers, right? That's not too bad. Right? Print, you know, please please enter some numbers. Right? First and foremost. I know how to grab one number, right? Input is equal to and I'll just leave that blank for right now. I'll say, actually, I'll advance it to the next line. Input int is equal to um, OK. Right, that's how, I get an, that's how I get a number out, right? Please enter some numbers. 14. It'll print out 14. And I know how to get one number, but 
but I'd like a pr I'd like to the user to input multiple numbers. So here we're going to turn up uh, we're going to learn about the while loop. Now the while loop's actually not very uh, now the for loop was very different from anything we'd seen before. The while loop on the other hand is not, right? We all saw the if statement, right? Like this. Um, so I'm going to just play around for a bit. If number is right if number is greater than 0 print that was a positive number right so if I run this, please insert some numbers, and I hit 14, it'll tell me it's a positive number. If, on the other hand, I put in the number, and I run, sorry, if I put in a number and it is negative, right, negative 12, it doesn't print out, right, because that statement over here was not true, right? So let's go ahead and introduce our new statement, the while statement, with some changes over here. So while number is greater than 0, while number is greater than 0, print that was a positive number, print Let's actually change that to input. It's equal to number. So the while loop is what we call an indefinite loop. And I think most of you, if you read it and just kind of look at it, you might be able to put a good guess as to what it's going to do. So let's go ahead and run it. Please enter some numbers. Let's enter, let's say, 15. That was a positive number. I'd like a negative number, actually. OK, 14. So that will take 14 from my, right? So print it out. I'd like to have a ne negative number, actually, as my input. And then it will take my input and store it in number. Oh, I'm going to get an error there because it needs to be I have to have an int statement surrounding this, right? And they'll put a slash in on there, so make it easier to see. And actually, if I, no, so if I do that, eh, that doesn't work it the way I wanted it to. Okay. Now, oh, wait a second. If I do this, hold on. No, no? Okay. Sorry, I was just trying to be clever. OK, please enter some numbers. 14, that was a positive number. I'd like a negative number, actually. 15, that was a positive number. I'd like a negative number, actually. 1, that was a positive number. I'd like a negative number, actually. Right? So this is an if, a while statement is essentially an if statement that repeats itself. Makes sense? Hopefully that exclamation right makes sense. Right? While the number is greater than 0, do the following. That was a positive number. So I take in the input and I say, okay, here's an, here's I'm changing the value for a number. It says I'd like a negative number actually. Okay, so so as long as I keep entering a positive number, it's gonna keep going. And this is why I call it an indefinite loop, because it's gonna run for as long as your user's an idiot, right? <laughs> okay, so if I enter in negative twelve, right? This condition was no longer true. We stored 12 in number. Is negative 12 greater than 0? That was false, so the loop does not run. Yes? So you don't have to like actually write down if it's less than 0? No. So it will, it, the loop will only run if it's, if, it's, sorry, if it's true, right? And it will stop as soon as, as once. It, so it stops not as soon as it's false, but basically once it checks, right? Uh, like, for instance,
just to clarify, if I pr put a print line over here that goes, um, oops, sorry, if I put a print line over here that says print thanks, I'm going to check your number, right? If I put a thanks, I'm going to check your number. Please, please enter some numbers. 14. That was a num positive number. I'd like a negative number, actually. 12. Thanks. I'm going to check your number. That was a positive number. I'd like another number, actually. 1. Thanks. I'm going to check your number. And then, if I, and then if I put in negative 1, it says, thanks. I'm going to check your number. Done. So it's not as so, so it doesn't stop as soon as the condition is false, right? It checks the condition only when it's completed, right? It does these three lines and then it goes back to the top and it checks it again, right? It does these three lines and then it goes back to the top and then it checks it again and says, hey, is this true? If so, we're going to run it again, right? 12, okay, we're going to, thanks, I'm going to check your number. 12. Great, I'm going to run this again. I'd like a, that was a positive number. I'd like a negative number, actually. So I put in one. Thanks, I'm going to check your number. One is greater than zero, so it's a positive number, so it's true. I'm going to run it again, right? So likewise, if I actually um, enter in a negative number to begin with, right, negative one, while num negative one is greater than zero, it doesn't run. Why? because it was false, so we don't run it. So while loops and for loops exist in every programming language that I basically have used, um, while loops, and, and here's the interesting thing about while loops. While loops and for loops, technically to write programs, we just need one. Any for loop can be written as a while loop, any while loop can be written using a for loop. In Python, that's not as apparent, um, but in in other programming languages like C and Java, it's super apparent that basically you can do either one. But for loops are much easier if you use them for, for your definite loops. And while loops are much easier if you use them for your indefinite loops. They just become much, they just end up being much cleaner. All right? So everybody kind of get the premise of the while loop. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at our. Um, at our original proposition, which is that I want them to enter some numbers and I'm going to sum them up, right? So let's go ahead and say, please enter some numbers. I will sum them up. And then print, enter, enter, let's see, done when you are done. Right? That makes sense. Well, I'm just giving them I'm just giving the user some instructions. All right? And my condition here is I'm setting it up that basically I'm going to get um, I'm going to now take this as let's see now I need to revise this. So let's go ahead and say um, I'm going to go ahead and actually comment this out so that it will be here for you later if you want to look at it. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and write, uh, rewrite this. So I'm going to call this user input is equal to input. Right? We're just going to get the input from the user. Enter done when you're there. And so we want to stop. So let's think about our while loop condition. Well, actually, Let's go ahead and just simply, we're just going to write something dumb. We can come back to our condition later, right? So I'm going to write while true, which, by the way, isn't necessarily smart, right? You don't want your while loop to always be true, right? Let's go ahead and just show what happens if I do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. Um, it doesn't look like this, but actually, sorry, it doesn't look like it because it's static, but actually what's going on is that it's actually printing out, ha, 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 wait, help, 
as fast as it can. Um, now this is, and actually I can't stop it. It's, it's what we call an infinite loop, where basically it's going to just run forever um, because I have no condition. Now it's not necessarily run, going to run forever. I can always like close this window, right? It'll say, okay. But actually if I run it again, there's another way to stop it, which is that I can just simply like hit, I think control Z, nope, control X, nope, control C, there we go. Control C will work. I always forget what my, my particular commands are, but control C will work um, for basically stopping a Python console on its track, right? You can, and you can do that at any time. Um, so not necessarily a great thing to always have your condition as true, but for testing purposes, it's okay. For testing purposes, right? By the way, if you put while false, right, is it ever gonna run? No because it's always false. All right, save it, run it. I said run, there we go. Okay, so it's never gonna run. Um, so let's go ahead and just, uh, the idea for this, right? Where the user's gonna enter something, right? Um, and what we're gonna do is that we'll check that user input. Um, and then, Okay, so if the user input, when do we want to stop? We want to stop when it is, when the user input is equal to the word done, right? Now, here's what I said where my font does weird things. Notice that I have two equal signs here. My font will combine them into one fat equal sign because I'm using something called fear code. Oh, that's, wait, not, not all, right? Not equals is a thing in, in Python, right? There's the not symbol, there's the equal sign. Watch what my font does. <laughs> not equals, okay? It's pretty cool. Um, it actually, if you were noticing, it, might, it does actually does that for the dots, where it renders the dots a bit differently depending on how many there are. It still takes up two spaces and it's still monospace. That's, it's fantastic though for, for those. But anyway, while user input, so there are two equal signs there. So while user input is equal to done. Now that would only run if I put in done, right? So that's not necessarily the condition I want. Right? So instead what I would like is maybe while the user input is not equal to done. So not gives you the opposite, right? Makes sense. While the, while the user input is not done, right? That makes sense to everybody? It kind of reads grammatically, almost, if you squint, right? So now if I put in done, it's not going to run because the user input was done is equal to done. So that was true and not flipped it around to false, right? Let's take a look at that in a bit more detail, right? The way not works. Okay, for instance, uh, true, right? True is true, but if I say not true, what's not true? That's false. Uh, what's not not true? Right? Not true. Not true is false. So not not true is true. This is definitely a question on the exam. Definitely a question. Uh, not not. I think basically I've done, let's see, last time I gave it in last summer, it was uh, not, 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 not true, right? So how the heck do I deal with that? Well, two knots cancel them, themselves out, right? Two knots cancel themselves out, so it's a true, right? Not, right, a knot flips it around and a, knot, and a second knot flips it back. So two knots in a row will cancel it out. Don't ever do not, 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 not true. I only get to do it because I get to torture you. <laughs> so, um, right, and of course, not false is true, right? Not false, the opposite, right? You have true and false and the opposite. So let's go ahead and see, like, five is greater than three, right? Is that true or false? It's true, wait, indentation error. Apparently that was an indentation error. Five is greater than three, at a space beforehand. Five is greater than three, that's true, okay? Uh, what about, so what about the opposite of that? Not five is greater than three. False, right? It's a bit weird to do it like that. Um, 
right? It's always easier when you're doing less than, when you're doing that is that it's sometimes easier to say five is less than or equal to three, right? To flip it around, to flip the sign around if, you, if that's what you want, right? But, um, but x is equal to five, let's go ahead and say x is equal to five. x equal equal five, right? Two equals in a row, right? Is x equal to five? True. Is x not equal to five? false, right? x is not equal to 5. Is that a true, sta true statement or a false statement? Well, x is 5, so that's a false statement. Wait, so there's two ways to actually write that. There's not x equal to 5, and then there's this. It's just up to your preference, to be honest. Okay. So let's go back to here. So while the user input is not equal to done, so we can totally do this. We can do print, ha, 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 wait, help. Oh, right, still having an infinite loop there. Why is that? Well, the reason I'm still having an infinite loop there is I put in A, right, while A is not equal to done. Sorry, while in user input, which is A, is not equal to done. Okay, that's true. Print, ha, 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 wait, help. A is not equal to done. Oh, wait, crap, right? So here's basically the way that you typically will find yourself is in inf infinite loop is that you never bother to change this, right? So if you get in an infinite loop, make sure you're actually changing this, right? So how do I change this? Well, I'm going to just simply go ahead and ask for the user input again, right? So I'll say A, 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 B, C, D, E, F, G, right? But as soon as I type in done, we're done, right? Because user input not equal to done, when I put in A, that was true. But when I put in done, done not equal to done is false, right? So while the user input is not equal to done, we're going to do this. That actually makes even more sense right when I read this. While user input is not equal to done, make sense? We're going to keep, yes? my font, uh, but um, it was exclamation point, okay. right? That's how I did that. But it makes it, but, and my justification is that it makes it a bit easier for you guys to read when I do that, kind of. I'm a big fan of these kind of fonts, so um, you'll have to put up with it, sorry. Uh, so anyway. While user input is not equal to done, we're just going to keep asking the user for more input. Okay? Right? So let's go ahead. So now that we can actually do this, right, we can start summing it up. Well, if the use, so let's go ahead and say total is equal to zero. So while the user input is not equal to done, well, um, if it's, if, if the input is not equal to done, we'll go ahead and try to convert it into a number. Int user input. And then we'll say total plus equals number. We'll increment our total by that amount. And then we'll ask the user to print out enough to get, uh, to give us another number. And now the order I did that was actually fairly important. So we'll go ahead and review this. But this is basically the pro program that does that, if I remember to end it correctly. Right? While the user input is not equal to done, um, I take what they put in, turn it into a number, add that number to our total, and then update the, and then ask the user for a new number. Right? Now the reason that order I did that in is particularly important is because, right, First off, if I did this one first, I'd get an error because number doesn't exist yet, right? If I did this one first, right, then would then basically it would grab what I put in, it would ask me for a new thing, and then it would immediately try to turn that into an into a number, and then add that number to the total. But if I had entered done, it would try to turn done into a number, which wouldn't work out so well for us, right? So that number, so the order I did that makes logical sense. So I run this. So I say 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then I type in done. 
and it gives me their sum. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That does actually equal 15. Now, um, it's important to note, by the way, that if I do f 5, 4, and then 3, and then I type in DONE in all caps, I'll get an error saying you can't turn capital D, done, capital word DONE, into a, into a number, right? So what happened? I input DONE over here in all caps, then it checked, is capital DONE equal to DONE? Well, capital done, that's in all caps. And for as far as Python is concerned, they are completely different things. Okay? They are completely different things. Yes? Is it possible Yeah, there's there's different ways to do it, yeah. So for one way to do that is we can say while the user input is not equal to done and the user input is not equal to done, right? Right? It's saying so long as both of these right, so long as both of these conditions are true. So long as both of these conditions are true, we'll keep running. Right? And we want an and here, not an or here, right? Because if it was an or here, it would just stop. Uh, and I'll show you in a second. But like here, I'll put in four and then I'll put in done and then it stops if I run it and I say blah 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 and put in lowercase done it stops okay so as soon as I put in done or capital done it stopped now why did I need an and there well as soon as I put in all caps done this part of it became false which turned the entire thing into false which stops the loop, right? So if it was an or over here, um, that would do the opposite. Um, that takes some getting used to. It actually goes into something called De Morgan's Law, um, which you, if you take math concepts, uh, if you take math concepts one in computer science, you'll learn more about. Um, if you really feel like you, it needs to be an or here, then this is the way it looks. while not done or done. Right, what did I just do there? I turned the and into an or and turned anything that was not and I pulled the not out from these guys and into here. That's called the Morgan's Law. Um, look it up on Wikipedia if you're interested or on any math website. It's not the things I'm going to do in class aren't really going to be that advanced for that. There's also an easier way, especially when you're handling user input, than actually doing that, um, which is fairly straightforward. Um, user input, while user input is not equal to done, so right over here we can take in a user input, and then um, it would be easier if basically I took anything over here and just converted it into lowercase. So let's see, is it two? Lowercase? Is it lowercase? I forget how it is. And I forget. That's no, it's okay to forget. So what do I do when I forget? How to convert string to lowercase in Python. And then it gives me stack overflow and it says it's lower. Right, I don't have everything memorized beca because um, I do multiple. I have to teach multiple languages, so I know in 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 Java it's too lowercase, so too lower. So here, what I'll say is that I'm going to say user input is equal to user input, but turned into lowercase now. Right now, that's not going to affect any of my numbers because numbers don't get changed, right, based on the lowercase. But now, if I put done, right, it will convert all the letters in done to lowercase, right, and check is done equal to done. That makes sense to everybody? Yes? Um, for my program, when I hit enter to put in more than one number, it like starts a new, like I get three access to the terminal to be able to 
Um, if you're doing, if it's give, um, that's probably because you're in the interpreter. So I'm I'm writing it in a scripter, right? I'm writing a pro a script right now. So you want to be writing a program for that. That's why. Right? If you're getting three arrows, that's that's like this. Then you're in the interpreter. Then you're in the interpreter, and you're basically entering it line by line. Which, by the way, you can totally set this thing to do an infinite loop as well. While true, print high, and then it's going to get crazy. And again, you'll have to do Control Z or Control C um, to break out of it. Although in, Pi although in a Mac, it might be Command. Don't know. So. While loops are very are also useful just when you don't know how long something is going to go for. All right. Um, let's see. What can I do? One that is uh, particularly useful for you guys. Um, so let's see. So I think I'll go ahead and go over a problem that you might see tomorrow again in your lab, but that's okay. Um, right, so suppose I wanted if I, I have a number, right? So let's go ahead, def num digits, right, n, and I wanted to figure out basically uh, how many digits a number had, right? So to clarify, right, 341, how many digits does that have? That has three digits, right? Uh, 12, that has how many digits? Two. Um, This is how many. This is how many digits. That's a five-digit number, right? So it is five, right? That's that's what I'm asking here. How many digits does this number have, right? Now, there's a couple ways to solve this. Now, the most common way to solve this, when you don't know necessarily the mathematical tricks for it, is you start thinking like a hacker. You start thinking about what kind of tools do I have. Right, so let's go ahead and go for the solution I don't want you to do, but most of you might think of. You're like, oh gosh, how, I don't know how long this number is going to be. So maybe I can try return len of it, right? Because if you turn, if, I, if this was a string, right? If this was a string, that would return that, right? So uh, print num, right, digits. One two. If that was num digits one two three, right? The string one two three, it would print out three, right? So maybe if I pass in a number, right, that will work. Maybe it will be nice, right? It'll go ah, ints have don't have a length, right? But you're thinking, okay, well, wait a second. What if, what if n was a string, right? They're passing it to me as an integer, but I can turn it into a string. Right, so you might say um, something like this. And as string is equal to str, and that's how I turned it into a string. Right? Um, hold on a second. String, n as string, and then, oh, right, then I'm asking for the n, n over there, so n as string. Okay. Oh, five. There we go. Boom. And three. Right. So that's one solution that a lot of students come up with. Or if we just simply condense that, that becomes str, right? Turn it into a string. Give me the length of it. That's not how I really intended it to happen the first time I gave this out in Python. But you want to know what students did? They used the tools that were available to them. And I said, well, you're not wrong. And I guess that means, therefore, you're right. <laughs> I, I, there, that this, this, the teaching is always an experiment. And I don't 
especially when you come up with a solution that works, I never see the need to penalize you. I might tell you, I'll give you credit for it right now, but try to do it this other way, right? So if it works, it works. If, however, you can't explain it, I'll tell you, you need to be able to figure it out, right? I saw some people use some things called list comprehensions for, for the third assignment. I really want you to be able to know what those are, okay? Um, speaking of which, I, I've already spoken to a couple of students who, um, who are taking this class and they have a lot of background, right, already, like they're taking this because the degree requires it and they already know like tons of programming, right, they already know arrays, they can manipulate arrays, they can do stuff like that already, or you've written programs before. If you fall under that category, I don't want you to get bored in this class, so please come and see me so that we can arrange, you know, something else for you to do because I want you to learn, but I don't want you to be bored out of your mind, and I'd rather get you doing interesting assignments instead, and we can set up something else for you. All right, so def nums, so going back to that. So how could I do this mathematically? Because actually, it turns out like turning a string into a number is actually rather, you know, is actually rather expensive, right? So one way to do that is to use a while loop, believe it or not. Right? Um, so let's go ahead and say digits is equal to zero, right? What we're going to do is that we're going to count the number of digits this thing has, and we are going to then return the number of digits, right? That doesn't do anything right now. It's just going to return zero no matter what I put in, right? Everybody see that it's just going to not do anything right now? So let's go ahead and look what other tools I have. What mathematical tools do I have? Um, the mathematical operations I have are plus, that's not really going to help here, minus, maybe, divide, eh, times definitely not, but we also have divide, divide, integer division, which throws out stuff. And then if you remember me from a couple lectures, I said there's kind of two useful tricks, for, there's a very useful trick for divide, divide, which is that if you want to throw away the last number of something, if you divide divide by 10, you'll throw away the last number of something. Like for instance, if I do print 1, 2, 3, divide, uh, divide divide 10, that will throw out the 3. And then if I do that again, right, so if I do that a second time, it'll give me 1, right? Do it once do it again, if I do it a third time, it'll throw out the la that last digit and it'll give me zero, right? And of course, if I keep doing that now after that, I'll still get zero. So basically, if I divide by 10, I'll throw out digits. I'll throw out one digit. And I'll be able to throw out as many tens as there are digits. Right, I'll be able to throw out as many digits as there are digits, and eventually I'll hit zero. So let's go ahead and see. While so this ends up being while n is not equal to zero, what should I do? I throw away a digit. N is equal to n divided by divide divide ten. Those throw out the last digit. Right? And then if I run it, I'm still going to get zero because I'm not incrementing digits, right? So n divide divide 10. So here, digits equals digits plus 1. So now it says there's three digits. So now if I put this in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I will get, gee, I'm getting a lot of text messages for some reason. All right. Like, did something happen while I'm not looking? OK, five. So why does that work? Well, digit starts out, let's go ahead and trace through this. Digit starts out at 0. While n, what is n? n is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So is n equal to zero? Is n not equal to zero? Yes, it's true. So what do we do? We do n is equal to n divided by ten. 
and digits is equal to digits plus one, so we turn this into one. Is n not equal to zero? That's true. So we divide by 10, and we add one to digits. Is this equal to zero? No. So we chop one off. We add over here and go, keep going. Let's go ahead and see. So now, we again, is this equal to zero? No. So we chop one off, add one to digits. Finally, is one equal to zero? No. So we chop one digit off, which brings this down to zero, increase this to five. Now, is n equal to zero? Yes, it is. So this statement is false, which means we're done. So we then return digits, which passes this value back up to here. All right. So that's going to help you on the homework. I think I'll go ahead and modify the original problem I had for homework. Um, the last thing I want to uh, mention for you to deal with your homework is, and then I'll let you guys come down and demo if you need to. Um, just a quick word about demoing. Remember, it's only it's not late based on when you demo it. It's late on based when you turn based on when you turn it in. So if you turn it in, it's not. If you turn it in your homework in today, it's not late. And if you demo it, if you turn it in today, demo it like next week, not late, right? It's based on when you turned it in. So the last thing I just want to remember. Um, the last thing I want to uh, remind you. Sorry, I'm in Python 3 now. Exit, so Python 3, is that you can iterate over a string. For letter in hello, print letter. So just go ahead and remember that. All right, so that's all I have for today. So. Have fun in lab.